Alrighty, what is up, party people? Happy Memorial Day. I hope you guys are having a great day. Um, we're starting things off. I know it's Memorial Day. Everybody's busy. They can't be hanging out watching some live stream. But actually, some people are working, which is crazy. Um, but some people who aren't in the U.S., you know, they're not uh, they're not doing Memorial Day, too. So, you know, I figured I'd do it. I'm hanging out here doing some, about to do some art. Um, and I may have some guests on too, which is pretty cool. Really excited about that. Um, so yeah. Um, so today I've been working, sort of working on comics. I did my thirty minutes. I did way more than thirty minutes, but it wasn't technically working on comics. Um, I just recently finished, uh, or yesterday, I just finished the Lone Wolf. Uh, sort of the samurai that I'm working on with Doug Garrett, the part of the um, Legends of the Lone Wolf comic, which you can check out the link down below if you want to um, contribute to the Indiegogo and get that uh, anthology. It's going to be awesome. Um, but I just finished the first page, which is kind of crazy. It's kind of funny because I've been working on pages after the first page because I wanted to get used to like drawing. Um, swamps and things like that and that's kind of how it's like a big establishing shot right in the beginning um but yeah i finished the first page and uh i actually that means that i got the first five pages done so i'm really excited to add that to the patreon uh the people who are supporting me on patreon but i'm also doing something special um i'm opening up all my free comics and things like that to my email list um so there's a link down in the description below if you want to check that out um and you you know once you subscribe you'll be sent um to a page that is the djp tr secret treasury of comics and it's retro fresh comics for free downloadable uh pdfs um so i'm really excited to kind of announced that here um i should have started off though with just saying you know <laughs> happy memorial day to everybody and you know I, I am you know thinking about uh you know all the people who sacrifice their lives sacrifice you know even the people who are sacrificing just to serve and stuff like that and also those who have died um to keep our country in america safe um so shout out to all of you and we're thinking about you today um for sure and uh yeah so happy memorial day to everybody i know you're thinking about your loved ones and, and things like that and hopefully you're having a safe memorial day and safe memorial weekend day weekend um, and maybe getting some grilling going um, it's going to be a beautiful day here it is i mean it's already noon almost uh, well, it's 11.30, so it's technically still okay to do the early bird art cast. Um, so, yeah. Um, so hopefully you guys are having a great time this week. And um, kind of to kind of have the theme continue on, I'm going to be working on a fan art piece for Hero, Blood of the Patriots, uh, which is a very patriotic comic by my buddies Mutt Man and Macho Dan. And you've seen Jason, a.k.a. Mutt Man, on the show um, a couple, a few times if you've been, um, you know, hanging out. And uh, he's an awesome dude. They're, they're both awesome dudes. And, uh, again, you can check out the link down below if you want to uh, contribute to that. Uh, GoFundMe. Also, don't forget Peter Palmiotti's only got, I think, three days left of his Kickstarter. Um, so definitely go check that out for Check Out Retro. All the links are in the description down below. Um, but yeah, uh, let's, uh, you know, I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to show you a little bit of what I was talking about earlier. Uh, let's see. Go over to share screen. Share your entire screen. I wish I could just share it application windows, but it doesn't want to let me. All right, so let's get to the this stuff. So when you click on the link below, if you want to um, get access to these comics, you'll come to this page, Donkey Drop Projects, Unlock the Secret Treasury of DJP Comics. 
Um, and then you, there's a sign up list uh, for your email. And this obviously goes to my email list. Um, so you can get some updates and stuff and hopefully you guys will dig that I'm going to be putting um, extra content there Basically, whatever digitally that I have been bringing over to patreon is going to also go to my email list uh, my patreon will still get um, You know physical special rewards and there'll be some extra special things for patreon um, but you know for the most part i mean it's going to be kind of the, there'll be special things for the email list and special things for patreon so um but this is the sign up um landing page and the the first name is not required so don't feel weird about that um you can just put your email in if you want but you know if you want to put your first name it just makes the um the emails feel a little bit more personal, which is kind of cool, I think. Um, and then once you go through the process of confirming your email and all that fun stuff, it will take you to the DJP archives page. And you need a secret um, password to get in here. But right now we got four comics in there. There's going to be more. I'm going to be adding to this uh, as we go. It's just going to keep... Uh, building and building and there's just going to be so much cool stuff so it's it's the uh you know djp treasury of secret comics <laughs> and so far we got lone wolf part one which is the first five pages if you want to check that out um of my story sort of the samurai with uh doug garrett and we got corn cob rob and the perilous sky ramp previously only this stuff is was only released to patreon and or if you purchased it so now you can get it for free just by signing up with the email list that's a uh, i think 24 page comic um darby cufflink and gentle gentleman avenger of comics this comic is like a super fun comic i actually just reread it today um and i was just like I love it. It's it's kind of rough around the edges. It's not, you know, me trying to make the best comic I can make. It's me trying to make a fun comic, you know, in a quick, quick amount of time. And this is the first comic that I ever did digitally as well, which I did a couple months back. And um, you can see this this comic. The cover is an homage to uh, Marvel Comics Presents number 92, uh, Sam Keith uh, Wolverine drawing, um, which is really cool. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, sorry. <clears throat> Still got that cold stuff going on. But, um, yeah, you can download this one for free. This is, uh, I forget how many pages. I think it's like 10 or so pages. Um, and then The Hitchhiker, which is from the original uh, The 100s Anthology, The Life in Space Anthology. And that's a six-page comic. I uh, did that a few years ago. And, uh, yeah, you can read that as well, um, download that for free just by signing up for the email list. So, yeah, you guys should check it out if you like, and um, you can get some free comics. All right, so now that that's said, um, let's see. I'm going to go to my screen where I'm doing some art for Hero and uh, working this out. So, spoiler alert, <laughs> you can already see on my screen, I've also included Lone Wolf in this, so. Um, so yeah, it's kind of funny, like so many people are, have to work today, it's crazy. Um, I hope that's not the case for me, I never actually got an official notice that I wasn't working. Um, but, you know, I did text my boss and he never answered me, so it's not on me. <laughs> not in my opinion, it's not on me. Um, so, let's see. I didn't have, a, like, a specific topic to talk about, really. Um, I was hoping to get some people on. Um, but, uh, you know, we can we'll go back and forth with the chat and stuff. Let me know, are, what are you doing today for Memorial Day? Are you, you know, not in America or are you, you know, working or, you know, just hanging out, doing some barbecue? And I'd love to hear. I don't have any, like, a specific plans, really. Um, I don't know why my eraser isn't working. 
Oh, I'm probably on the wrong layer. All right. Um, yeah, I don't have any plans or anything. We're probably just going to hang out at home. Um, so, you know, actually, my wife and I might go out. I don't, there's probably stores that are open and stuff. She wanted to stop at a place. Um, so we'll see what happens with that. Hopefully, we get to get out and enjoy this beautiful weather um, for a little bit. Uh, so, yeah. I think it's going to be in the 70s today. Um, sunny, nice and sunny and stuff. I tell you, I, I don't know. I'm not really great at getting nice, you know, smooth lines and stuff yet digitally. Um, not that I ever really was great at it non-digitally. I don't know. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Um, doing a little bit of slight modification to kind of uh, the gear for this. Um, not because I don't like it, but, you know, I just figured I'd kind of put my own little take on it a little bit. Because um, it's fun to do that when you're doing some fan art. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I should have thought of a topic. <laughs> uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I'm excited. I, I've been wanting to get that um, the um, email list thing going for a long time. I mean, I've always had an email list, um, but you know, I'd never. I've always wanted to connect it to some kind of incentive for people. You know, I want people to get something cool for signing up. You know. Uh, giving me the privilege of being able to let them know about some things. and I mean, if you want to keep up to date, I'm going to start doing a, um, a weekly email, um, I think. And I, want, I really want to get disciplined to make sure I do an email once a week at least. Um, some people do, they, they say, like these email marketer people, you know, they talk about that it's actually good practice to do one email a day. Um, I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> I know some people don't like that too, but, um, you know, it's just, I don't, I don't have time to do an email a day, you know, so it's probably not going to happen uh, on that level, but, you know, it doesn't matter. I, I'll do, I'll try, I'm shooting for one a week and you know, maybe I'll be a little more frequent if I can, but we'll see. I think it's going to be hard to even just do one a week. So, <laughs> you know, I can only do so much. It's not like it's super hard to just do that, but it's hard to do like one email a week, two videos a week, you know, <laughs> work on comics. <laughs> There's always so many things, you know, to try to do. And I'm trying, I'm actually... Like, I kind of have a way I just do things all the time with social media, but I'm not trying to increase anything on social media. If anything, I'd decrease my, my activity, you know, if I could. But, you know, the stuff that I kind of do by default, you know, posting on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, and those are like my three places, and I just kind of do that. That's like what I call, I think, uh, a smart way to go about things is to have your... Um, social media recipe, you know, do it, do the things that kind of resonate with you. Um, and that's kind of how I approach it. Yeah, let's see. So. <clears throat> Good afternoon. I hear a sound. <laughs> yes. Hello. What is up, Mr. Comic Book Black Belt Russ? How you doing? How are you doing? I'm doing well. I can good. trying to make sure I can hear you good. Oh, I see some cool stuff on your screen. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Is this more of the drawing comics, the Marvel way stuff? Or? Yeah, it's just stuff um, on the screen at the moment. Uh, I'll uh, switch back to me, actually, for a little while. My That's ugly mutt. <laughs> <laughs> So how's it going, man? What are you up to today? Um, I was drawing. Oh, no. That's like a screen of everything. Um, 
I was drawing some storyboards. Mm -hmm. um, but now I've got to do uh, some work on, <laughs> uh, let's say, I've got to do some, some digital comics. Um, they're like um, choose your own story. Mm -hmm. um, but it's on a popular young wizard. That's as far as I can say. <laughs> wow. I think I can figure it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I can't really show any of that stuff. So. Yeah, no doubt. Well, that sounds like a pretty awesome gig. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's um, good money. It's, uh, it's from a company that I've, I've done several demos with. So it's not directly from the publisher. Um, but they're talking, it's like a third party talking to them and uh, doing uh, demos of different software and what have you using, using comics as uh, as a medium. So um, yeah, it's, it's just one of those gigs, but the, um, the storyboarding is the, is the one I'm on at the, at the moment that's taking up most of my time. So um, gotcha. it, it so, takes up too much actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, maybe we could talk a little bit about that because I've never actually um, done storyboarding. But uh, before we do that, um, just so everybody knows, if you don't know, um, this is Russ of Comic Book Black Belt, the YouTube channel Comic Book Black Belt, and he does a lot of awesome videos. Um, he's just starting to build up his uh, his YouTube thing, but uh, I I really love his videos. I watch them as much as, as often as I can, and um, I'm really loving it. And he's an awesome artist. Um, is there any place you'd like to point people to besides your YouTube channel? I have that link down below. But. Yeah. Um, first off, thanks very much. Um, that's uh, that's very good of you to say. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it is. Um, it's very slow, isn't it? Building up a channel. Mm. Um, it takes a long time, and you have to put a lot of effort into it. Um, yeah. I have to say, I'm always really impressed with the stuff that you do and and how you present. Uh, it's constantly inspiring me into do to doing something slightly different. Um, you can go see my channel. I'm at Comic Book Black Belt. Um, I like. Marsh says the uh, the links down below, um, but you can pick me up at russleach.com and uh, you can see my work there. You can come see me on Facebook. Um, uh, just just type in my name, you're, you're sure to find me. Um, and uh, I think I'm on MeWe as well. That's a new one. I've got a, an account over on Gab and on Minds, so um, I'm pretty much multi output at the moment <laughs> so yeah. uh yeah just just give me a shout and i'm um, always happy to chat and uh talk comic strip art and that's uh russell leach right if they're trying to find yeah you yeah russ leach yeah l-e-a-c-h russ leach and uh com comic book black belt.com i think is uh is actually uh associated to my uh russ leach uh internet site as well so you should be able to pick me up one way or another Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah, everybody definitely check his stuff out. Um, and yeah, it, it is, uh, it, it just takes a lot of time, a lot of work to kind of build up YouTube, but, uh, mm. I think you'll do well. Um, you already, already right out of the gate, put out quality videos and that's half the battle right there. Thanks. Yeah. It, it putting a lot of effort into the videos. Um, it takes time, doesn't it? It's like you're trying to put all that time into your art, and then, and then, of course, yourself. You're holding down a job as well. I don't know where you find all the time. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, it's not always easy, but uh, you know, I, I kind of um, I, I make my my kind of process for doing all this stuff pretty streamlined. So I do like everything on my phone for the most part, except for like when I'm doing a live stream. Hmm. Do that on my computer, but um, you know, for the most part, I do everything on my phone. Even my thumbnails and stuff I create on my phone. Um, I do my editing and stuff on my phone. So you know, that makes me be able to kind of take care of that stuff wherever I am at any point. You know, so that's kind of how my secret, you know, to being able to do some of this stuff. Um. And you know, I just try to make it the best I can with what I have. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's tough to find time sometimes, for sure. Um, 
Okay. That's true. Go ahead. That's yeah. I'm, am I in twice now? <laughs> All right, you're here twice. Is that what you're saying? How does that, how does that work? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got it just, I just got kicked out, and uh, is open or something. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. <laughs> it's funny. Um, yeah. So. Uh, there's a couple. I actually did have a topic. It made me think of some things now that, that I'm thinking of it. Um, and it kind of makes sense with uh, you um, come us talking about like YouTube and stuff and trying to manage that. Um, hmm. I saw a question on a, 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 a um, Facebook group uh, that a lot of people have been responding to, a lot of my friends. Um, and the question was basically, you know, do you should you try to juggle one or more like more than one project at a time or should you try to just focus on one project at a time and mm -hmm. i imagine i mean you just talked about kind of going back and forth a little bit like you were working on something earlier but now you got to work on storyboards and stuff like yeah what do you think about that um if i had an option i'd do one thing at once mm -hmm. so if it was a personal project and uh I was uh, uh, I didn't have to worry about the paid for work. So, for instance, if if I back in the day, if if I was uh, if I was like I used to be, and I had a, a full time job, and I wanted to do a comic strip project, I'd make sure and do one at a time. Mm -hmm. But that might have something to do with the fact that um, I'm getting on a bit <laughs> and probably can't manage multiple projects in the way that I used to. Um, mm -hmm. But from a from a um, professional perspective, uh, sometimes I have no choice. So you freelance, and it's it's very much um, feast or famine. Like mm. I, I, the last up until the end of last year, I'd had a very quiet year. Uh, things ch turned around. I I stopped it. I was doing I was drawing a Ben Ten strip for a while, and that stopped. Uh, so I picked up other bits and pieces of illustration. And actually picking those other bits up, I net networked with some people. Uh, and now, at the moment, I've just not got enough hours in the day because I've got three projects running at once. So it's very difficult to organise yourself. But unfortunately, that's that's just the nature of the business. You, you've got to grab it while you can. Uh, and then you've got to be disciplined enough. It, it, it takes a lot of self-discipline to be a freelance uh, anything. You know, you know, um, because you've got to get up, you've got to go to your own desk and what have you and work. Um, but uh, it takes discipline as well to say, right, I've got no work in at the moment. I probably will have work in soon. Take the time to rest because you need to recharge your batteries. So uh, it's just a discipline of mind, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. It's it's. Uh... <laughs> It's certainly um, not easy. Um, I personally think that there is a benefit um, to to both, kind of. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, there's something to be said for sure about focus. And I, I think that's really important. And I know I do better when I, when I can focus a bit. Um, but at the same time, there's also something to having like a big project and then, you know, sometimes it's, it's hard to just stick to that big project for a long time. Like and having maybe one or two like little tiny projects, even if it's just like a little illustration or something, you mm -hmm. know, kind of helps you to feel like, okay, I'm still getting things done, but I, even though I'm working on this big long-term project at the same time, you know, yeah, I mean, there's definitely something to be said for that because um, it, even if it's just down to, um, like we're talking about with YouTube, juggling um, your time during the day. So if you're on one project and you need to walk away from the project and do something else, you can still be productive because you've got something else happening. You've got another project on or you can do a YouTube video or you're going to hit some... Um, some uh, social media or whatever and you feel like you're being productive so mm -hmm. that definitely i i know exactly what you're saying i i think i'm probably just uh just old <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's not enough room no. in my head for I, everything. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know if that really plays. I don't know. Maybe I don't just don't know. But you know, <laughs> I mean, I think it, I think we all. Str- I think one thing kind of that can be said as far as like focus and stuff is a lot of times we think we can focus on more than one thing Mm, mm. and when it really comes down to it people there's no such thing i I don't believe that there's a such thing really as multitasking um like i mean there kind of is like you can kind of juggle a few things at once Mm -hmm. but when it really comes down to it it's literally impossible to focus on two things at once like oh you're right yeah physically like physiologically we can actually focus on more than one thing at once even though we feel like we're trying to um but that being said it's also you know to a detriment because if you have in the back if you're like working on a project and you have in the back of your mind i really want to get to this other project i find that i actually it it does make the other project suffer sometimes so yeah yeah, um, there has been a certain level of focus that I've gotten to because before, I wasn't even necessarily focused on comics. Um, mm-hmm. I was like, I want to do a music project. I want to do a comic. I want to get into this other kind of art, like paintings or something or whatever it was. And I found that I wasn't getting anything done, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I finally got to the point, you know, where I'm like, you know what, comics is what I'm doing. And it's funny because I've had opportunities to do some music projects recently where I've almost had to do some music stuff and I I actually can't do it anymore. It's so weird. Like I'm, I'm so used to doing kind of both, but I've gotten to a point where it's like, I just can't switch that brain on for some reason. So I don't know. There's something to be said for focusing it. Yeah, definitely make things go like more efficient and you also get better quality work out of it. Yeah, no doubt about that. Focusing does produce better quality. Um, I, I think it's different for for everybody. Everybody comes in it their own way. Um, but there's definitely something to be said for, uh, like you say, you, um, being multi uh, multitasking. It, it's it's not a real thing. Mm. It's just uh, how well you can partition each piece of focus to each particular thing you're going to do mm. and manage that. And if you can do that, then you're okay. <laughs> um like i say I, for, for me personally um it, it is good to 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 go to smaller things like you were saying maybe one piece of illustration or what have you but if i'm running multiple large projects side by side uh, it's, uh sometimes i feel it's, it's almost uh, an impossibility to give them everything they need mm-hmm. so um so and but but of course that comes down to time management as well how you manage your time i think you do that particularly well from what i've seen um, from from my perspective of doing it uh, six days a week, um, it's a matter of, of of leveling out and saying, well, I need chunks of days to do certain things rather than hours. Um, so in some ways that makes it a little easier because you can settle into a job and, and get going on it and know that you've got a day or two days to do it uh, as long as nobody phones you up and says they need something like immediately. Um and that that's something that I suffer from. I'm not very good at that. And that's probably why I haven't pulled my own project out yet, because I like to sit down and get on with something. And the idea of doing it for an hour or half an hour or a couple of hours even, uh, I'm not very good at that. That's that's my failing. I'm just not very good at that. I need to be able to have a, a bit of a run at something. So I'm okay if I can divide things up into daily chunks, but hourly chunks I'm rubbish at. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's, I think, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's really tough. Um, you know, it, like you said, you kind of got to know yourself. You have to be very aware of the type of person you are and stuff. Um, but there's also, um, you know, it, it might be worth it to try and do the extra challenge, you know, and, and, but if mm. you were to do it, like I would say, you know, um, as I, always say you know <laughs> have it, doing like the 100 days of making comics challenge has been a lifesaver in that regard um and i've seen uh, so many people kind of experience some similar uh, concerns that you're talking about mm-hmm. and um 
you know, because it's only a half an hour that they have to do, they've been able to manage, you know, what they need to do. Yeah. Also, I mean, you're even already doing it anyways. You were working on something before this, and then now you're on to what you're doing today. Yeah. Uh, right yeah. Now, so. uh, that's because I had to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know that I would choose to do it that way. And yeah. I'm always impressed when people can do that. Um, like was like I was saying, everybody's so different. Um, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, so I, I mean, I have had my own projects out before, but I've not done, um, I've not written and done the art on anything, and uh, I've not done my own crowdfunding before, which is what I'm aiming to do. Um, but it's just uh, getting rid of the paid jobs first, uh, so that I can I, I can dive into that. Yeah. Um, and it's it's looking at this rate. It's looking like it's going to be September before I can even get a crack at it. And I was hoping I was going to start uh, drawing in June, like next month. And mm. it's it's going to be September before I get to start. So probably my crowdfunder will probably end up being next year mm. rather than this year now. Um, it's it obviously it, you know it's. Uh, it's a nice problem to have because I'm obviously getting paid to do what I want to do. So I can't complain, but as a creative, and I know you're, you're very creative, um, wanting to get to that thing that's yours. Uh, for the longest time, all I wanted to do was draw comics. So I got into comics in 2010 after I, um, finished a, a, a basically a career in production, art direction, that kind of thing. And I decided I was going to try and get back to comics, which is what I wanted to do all along. Mm -hmm. And um, getting back into it was, well, getting into it in the first place is very difficult. But I always had in my head, and, and when I was a kid, I dreamed of being in the Marvel bullpen. That's all I wanted to do. I just wanted to turn up, draw pages, and and go to sleep. You know, that, that, was, that was all I was interested in. Mm -hmm. So I, I kind of still had that kind of boyhood uh, nostalgia when I came to try to get into comics uh, 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 as an older person, and um, it wasn't there. Not not that it necessarily ever was there in reality. It was it was kind of like a, a a fantasy that he made that was very attractive to all the fans and to people who wanted to draw comics. But freelance was the way it was. You, you know, you drew most of the time at home. Sometimes you'd team up with people and get studio space but you worked at home or you worked in your own studio. And, um, and, and I still right up until a little while ago in my head, it was like, okay, I want to draw pages for a studio like Marvel or DC or dynamite or who, whoever it might be. That was what I wanted to do. I wanted to draw pages and either ink or have someone else ink those pages. And then that was it. That was my job done. Tell a story. I'm all about the story. Mm -hmm. um, but it was the art side of it. And, and that's what that's what drove me. So I would team up with writers because I felt I couldn't necessarily do that side of the job. Uh, and also, I just wanted to, to get a page rate. Um, well, I had a page rate on Doctor Who in the UK, and I had a page rate on Ben 10. And it puts you, it makes you, uh, it, it kind of makes you soft uh, because you know the money's coming in, you're going to do the page rate. But just like if you were working for a company and they made you redundant, you've got no control over it whatsoever. You have nothing. You just have your page rate. And when they decide that the book's finished, that's it. You're out the door. Nothing. Yeah. So I carried on illustrating for Draw the Marvel Way, and, and I've done a, another couple of pro comic projects for other people in the meantime. But then I got to a point where I thought, no, I can do this. And I've written myself two scripts, one of which will be an ongoing and um, I thought, no, I, I'm going to bring the entire vision is going to be mine. I'm not going to rely on somebody else to make this happen for me. And it doesn't matter, matter whether that's somebody paying me a page rate or a writer writing something for me. These are my characters. This is my story. I'm going to make this happen. So I, I went out and started to get other illustration work and I've got, I've got the storyboarding and what have you. And hopefully that's going to fund me for a, a, a between three and six months to get on with my project and then i'll go for the crowdfunding funding and um the idea is to build some kind of uh, reader base 
some kind of uh, base of, of people that want to read and, and look at my work and then build on that and keep that going um, and uh, hopefully get some more storyboarding work in between. So I've, got, I've now got a plan, which I didn't really have before. I thought I had a plan, but I didn't. I just wanted to draw pages and get paid, and that was it. And, of course, that comic book industry isn't there anymore. The comic book industry I wanted to be in when I was a kid doesn't exist. It's gone. Yeah. All of it. Marvel, DC, they, they, they are what they are, but they, they are not what they were when I was a kid. So right. um, so you have to make your own way. You have to be that creative person. The people that stand out, certainly the people that are standing out at the moment, are those people that come up with their own ideas. Mm. Uh, whether that's a writer and artist team together, or whether it's just single people, you know, single creatives doing both that's where it's at so um i've got i've gone the full in, in just a few years that it seemed to take a lot of, a lot of artists a long time to go through that whole process of drawing for other people and then ending up coming to the to the um coming to the the decision that they should do it themselves and it's kind of taken me nine years since i started in 2010 um and i've, I've it's kind of all been squashed into a really short time frame and most of that is to do with the, the, the fact that the industry is is just so rapidly changing. Yeah. Um, and just so you guys know in the chat, I will be um, coming over there and, and uh, chatting a little bit with that with you guys. Um, but I do want to continue on kind of this train of thought a little bit with Russ. Uh, but we will be over there. Um, so it's just it's interesting to me um, that. It, it seems like your main um, your main interest when it came to comics was more on the side of uh, you know drawing for the big two, which is mm. um, totally awesome. Like I think that's where most people probably start out. I feel yeah. like I'm one of the rare people who like didn't, but um, not that I think that there's anything wrong with that at all. I think it's awesome. I just didn't have. A desire I, I think well you know what it is I think maybe I could have had the desire but because when I first got into comics it was um, you know is when creator owned was really starting to pop off with image right. and stuff. So, yeah so I automatically was already thinking in that realm and I just thought it would be so cool to create my own stories and it's just I guess it just resonates with the way I am or whatever but um you know it, it, did you, this idea that you have, I, I know you probably don't want to talk about it too much, but um, I'm just curious, um, how long have you have you been thinking about this idea? Is it something you thought about when you were a kid or is this something you came out with up with recently? Uh, I think the I think there's, there's two levels to that answer. <laughs> uh, I think the, the way that it looks, the way that it's going to look is something that's been with me since I was a child mm -hmm. um, because I I'm I'm a an out and out devotee of the bronze age mm -hmm. uh so silver going into the bronze and then into the early 90s i i, I love 90s stuff as well i've always been a big jim lee fan um mm -hmm. but but where i where my heart really belongs is with people like john busima and stalin and uh and all those bronze age books that um and e even the reprints from the late silver age going into the bronze uh, when I was a kid, the the first book that I or the first comic that I really, really, truly fell in love with was Captain Britain, and mm -hmm. they had reprints in there by uh, John Buscema and Joe Sinnott of Fantastic Four, mm -hmm. and um, also reruns of uh, Nick Fury, Agent of Shield by Steranko, mm -hmm. and th these were the things that affected me the most, and I always wanted to draw a book that looked like that. Um, and I've been spending the last nine years um, trying to develop a style that I didn't want to copy. We, we stand on the shoulders of giants, but mm. you know, these people led the way you don't want to look, I don't want to look like J John Boosmer. I, I used to want to look like John Boosmer. I used to want to look like Jim Lee, mm -hmm. but I realized that's not the way forward. You have to have your own, um, character in your artwork mm -hmm. and and part of my character part of my comic strip dna is the whole of the bronze age even though I, I tend to veer towards certain artists so 
I wanted that book. I wrote two scripts recently. One of them, I, I've had this idea in my head that I wanted to do uh, a graphic novel that was similar to the John Boosmer graphic novel. Uh, it was a Silver Surfer, and every page was a whole page. It was a splash page. Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to do a book like that. So that was the first script I wrote. But I felt that that wasn't necessarily the right thing to come up, come out with, especially crowdfunding-wise. Uh, I needed to have some support. Uh, I needed some people to believe in my work before they stretched to this single-page, splash-page type graphic novel. So I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to come up with something that it can run from one book to another, but is not run on a 25 or 22 page episodic uh, version. So it'd be uh, almost like, um, uh, almost like uh, Hellboy came in uh, four episode miniseries chunks. They didn't have an ongoing title. It was like in, it was in the story was in chunks. Mm -hmm. um, but the difference being is I don't want to do four 22 pages. What I want to do is a a, a 60 page um, so, kind of like what the old one shots were, um, a 60 page graphic novel um, that would be done every, I don't know, every maybe two or three a year. Um, and that eventually once it gets going, I'd like other writers to come in and give me their take on it. And the idea is that the, uh, the the book is called "Only Death Can Save Us." It's a um, it's cosmic man, <laughs> as, as in it's it's definitely got its feet in the Bronze Age, and it's uh, it's kind of like got a bit of um. Do you remember Sliders, that uh, TV series where they used to go from one? Oh yeah, distance to another, and I never quite knew where they were going. Uh -huh. Well, it's got a little bit of that to it, okay. uh, uh, a little bit of that to it, um, as as a as a conceit to go from one story to another. It uses that plot device, yeah. which means that I can finish up my first sixty pager and set up the story, and then I could maybe go to anywhere. So literally. I could take my character to the Marvel 616 universe, or I could take it to your universe, or I could take it to Peter Palmiotti's universe. And this this character or these series of characters can go anywhere in reality or right. existence. And and that's why there's this cosmic aspect to it. Um, but also a very I, I wanted to get emotion in there as well. So um that's gonna test me on my first story writing. Uh outing so i've i've written the first score i've i've written the plan to the first script i need to sit down and actually get it into panels and pages properly and then i'm ready to draw it right interesting so yeah that's that's cool i like that you're setting it up you know that way to to be able to be really versatile um story-wise and stuff uh, i've thought about a lot of similar things with my comic because same thing it would be like cool to like you know share universes and stuff mm. like that and it's a cool idea for sure well what i was trying to do with this is that i don't have to share anything mm -hmm. my guy could go any or my 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 it's a it's a duo they can go literally anywhere and they don't know where they're going before they go there Gotcha. So you can drop them in anywhere. You can literally somebody else could take the pro to the, the IP and say, okay, I'm going to put them in my book, and that would be okay. And yeah. and and that I think that um, where we uh, sometimes I, I listen to Peter Sametti, and he he does great things. I love what he does. Um, I love his uh, his approach to comic books. I, th I think he's got a real old school approach. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and he's such a wonderful guy. He's a really nice guy. And uh, he, he he talks quite often about the fact that he, he can't have the editorial control over a universe because it's just too much for him to cover. So all the books that he has in, in Alterna, they're all separate from each other. Right. They don't have a, a, a coherent universe, as it were. And, that, and that's fine. It works brilliantly, just like that. And the the thing the, the idea about the plot device or the the conceit that I have in this book is that 
my character, for instance, could go in every one of those books. It could turn up in every one of those books and be right. part of one of their stories or part of one of my stories. Um, not, I'm not sort of, you know, uh, focusing or all, all Turner. What I mean is anybody, but it's a kind of way of being able to, without having to worry about editorial control over one massive universe, it's a way of bringing books in together. Um, and what I was hoping to do, uh, obviously if it's successful and people like it is that maybe at some point rather than thinking about uh, a combined universe in somebody like alterna or um you know any idw or something like that but but the fact that there are so many indie creators out there at the moment that we could in some way share a story or um or or a character can just pop in and say you know and, and just do a cameo even and and uh, it wouldn't be something I, I mean i wouldn't have any issue with ip i'd love the fact that somebody might take my characters and say okay we're just going to have them walk through the background or something anything like that i'd, I'd love that idea and it gives us all an opportunity something and it's, it harkens back and this is actually only something that's developed over the last six months while i've been writing it and being on youtube and talking to people is there such a community it would be great to be to be able to, to flip around that community and, and be involved in other people's books and them in mine. So um, it, it's just a concept. It's just an idea, but I think it would be a really good thing to do. Yeah. I think it's a smart way to approach it and a fun way as well. So, um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's get that, get over to the chat real quick and see how things are going. Um, people are saying happy Memorial day and stuff. Um, oh, yeah, it's just a bank holiday over here. Yeah. Oh, you guys actually have some kind of holidays. We have uh, uh, two May bank holidays. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh, looks like Ronnie's in here. Clay's in here. What's up, man? Um, Hi, all. Yes. Hello to all. Um, let's see. A little behind on the stream. That's all right. We we kind of did a slow start, anyways, and, and usually the good stuff gets and comes kind of in the middle to, and then moves gets better towards the end and stuff. Mm -hmm. So. No problem with getting in here a little late. What is up, Creed? I haven't seen you around too much, except for on Instagram. How you doing, man? You should jump on sometime again. Um, oh, okay. He says he has uh, Remembrance Day in November instead of Memorial Day. Gotcha. He's in... Uh, oh, where where exactly is it? I, he's... I wanted to say Canada, but it's something else. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> uh, looks like Scott's in here. I'd rather be drawing. I'm assuming it's Scott because there's two people who kind of do that channel, but he just seems to be the one. Um, let's see. He's working. Everybody's working today, surprisingly. Yeah. Um, I'm working. <laughs> yeah, I mean, technically, I'm, I'm working, too. I'm yeah, not working yeah you my, too. Yeah. I'm not working at my side hustle, a.k.a. the 9 to 5, but I'm working here. <laughs> working on the important stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, uh, oh, he's gonna do a meetup at his local comic shop. That's awesome. Um, let's see. Clay says, I know Photoshop's got smoothing options. I wonder about Clip Studio, though. Oh, he's probably talking about um, issues I had. I want, I want to screen share like my actual like Clip Studio, but it never lets me screen share just that. Like, so I have oh. to screen share my whole screen on Google Hangouts. Um, what's my story about coming up in the 100s anthology? Hmm, I'm not sure if I understand exactly what you're getting at, but I could probably address that. Um, there's a lot, a lot there. <laughs> uh, Ronnie, you had to go. Okay, no problem, man. Thanks for coming in. Clay says, quick question. When you talk about discipline of the mind, do you strengthen that discipline? And if so, how? Is that something you were naturally good at or is it an ongoing process? Um, I think that's in re reference maybe to something you were saying. Yeah, I, I think um, discipline is both. Um, some people are born with good discipline. Some people, are, and I think maybe it's upbringing as well. Um, I, I've, I've always been good at, at knuckling down and getting on with stuff. Um, but yeah, just doing it, do, just getting on and doing is always going to be helpful. Um, mm. 
it's like saying um you know it's always easy to get a job when you're working and and that's that's the way it works by by knuckling down and doing it um and uh, i've been working uh at home or in my own environment since 2000 mm. um when um i started my own business um so i i, I would code and uh, my kids would come and sit on my lap while i coded so uh not always <laughs> sometimes they're a bit too loud um but uh but I, I could i could focus quite quite well and i think that's like we were talking about earlier focusing is is really important um obviously i you know my karate is is a help as far as focus is concerned mm. but um I, I would say you know he's on, on a point there that some people are better at it than others and some some people just have to work harder at it than others Gotcha. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, I always forget that you did coding and stuff as well. That's like, I, I kind of wanted to get into it. Like if I was, you know, in high school right now and I knew about coding, I think I would get into that. Oh, yeah, learn, learn to code. I'm probably going to be banned now for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just a great, um, it, it, there's just so much opportunity in that. that oh, yeah career path and i mean i don't know i i, I have kind of dabbled in it a little bit just because i was curious and because i wanted to maybe find a career outside of what i was doing um but it's just something i'm gonna i'd have to buckle down and really learn and take time and yeah I mean, if you want to want to take time i end up working on this stuff so <laughs> yeah if you want to talk about discipline coding um yeah. some people like like we uh, I, there's this there's the prevailing uh, wisdom that says that everyone can draw. And mm -hmm. yes, everybody can draw. Everybody can draw something. Uh, I think some people have more of a, uh, they're more attuned to it. Yeah. So they, the, the, the practice and the uh, learning of techniques will go in slightly easier, <laughs> but everyone can draw. Everyone can code. But you need to learn the syntax. You need to learn the, uh, how it works, and you need to wrap your head around logic. And so, not everybody is necessarily appropriate for that. Um, right. And if we talk about discipline, I would say it was I, re I required a lot more discipline to code than I did to draw, because drawing came far more naturally to me than coding ever did. And you might say, well, of course it did. You know, people used to draw on the side of walls when we were living in caves of course it did but <laughs> what what i mean to say you know because coding isn't necessarily a natural thing but that whole sort of logic process and seeing things through building things uh software architecture that kind of stuff that's hard work it, it really is it's, it, it it makes you think you know you, you really have to to have a disciplined mind whereas you can let yourself go with the art so i feel more inclined towards the art um, as far as doing a job is concerned, I always considered uh, drawing much like being a professional football or a professional athlete. People talk about athletes being um, talented. Um, and you look at that and you think, well, how are they talented? It's a physical thing. They just have an aptitude towards the sport or the athletics that they're in. Um, and of course, it's easier to do something you have an aptitude for. So the you know the the natural athlete gets paid really well for doing something they love and they're really good at and uh, it's the same i think with art um and some people are the same with code they're just really really good at it um i always worked really hard at it i was very much a problem solver uh, mm -hmm. so i pushed myself to solve problems um but by the time i got to the end of the business by the time that the business came to a natural end um I didn't want to code anymore, which was why I, I went back to looking at, at drawing. So, yeah. um, you know, it's, it's different strokes, different folks, and um, all things take discipline um, if you want to do them right. That's, yeah. that's the bottom line. <laughs> it seems to me that coding is, in some ways, it's, it's similar to comics in that there's a lot of problem solving, like you said. Mm. Also, another thing is it's particularly, I think, tedious compared to a lot of other kind of disciplines. Would you say that? Or y yes, I would. I, I think it. Um, there were there were plenty of times where I, I had to I had to 
build a solution and yes it was tedious um but you do you can get lost in the process mm -hmm. so um literally being lost in the process so i would wake up at night with whole strings of code in my head and i'd i'd figured out something that i couldn't figure out the day before right and, and your brain was doing things when you you you, you were asleep it was doing things when you weren't expecting it and what i mean by that and and my previous comment getting lost in the code is literally you can just be sitting there in reams and reams of code thinking about a loop within a loop um working out a, a, an algorithm and you're lost it's almost like art in in that way is you're completely lost to the outside world you're totally inside what you're doing your stream of thought or, you know whatever um so it can be quite tedious uh, and but you can get lost in it as well but i i found myself getting to a point where i'd have had to have gone and um i'd have had to have gone and done a lot more learning i'd have had to have gone and taken more courses and what have you to keep up something that you do have to do with code is you have to keep up with the technology constantly mm -hmm. um, i stopped coding or i do my own website uh little bits and pieces of code but i stopped um literally programming logic in 2008 2009 and i doubt i could do it now mm. to be honest with you I, I doubt i could do it and i certainly it would certainly take me far too long to come up to speed with um the current set of, of technology um but um you know that's that's just because i've been away from it for so long if you were into it and you kept up the technology you could obviously do that but uh, i found it it was just too much for me whereas i i, I want i'd really really wanted to draw so uh, i gave up <laughs> yeah. yeah um what uh languages did you primi primarily work in uh, i used uh i was old vb uh, a little bit of c plus plus um, I did some ASP.NET where I used C plus uh, C sharp and VB uh, sharp in there. Um, I did some JavaScript. Um, I, I did a couple of other bits and pieces, uh, a little bit of Perl. So bit, bits and pieces. Basically, I was I was a fixer. I, I kind of went and did stuff. I, I made things work. Um, so I, I had multiple disciplines. Uh, and if you wanted to get a hardcore coder in, then you, you went and you went and bought the talent in. So um, yeah, it was it was kind of like um, stitching script together. Mm -hmm. Although saying that, uh, my my daughter's uh, boyfriend is is uh, a coder, and just looking at the stuff that he does now is very much script orientated. So um, maybe I would have been all right if I'd stayed in. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I thought I had to go hardcore, but it seems all the hardcore um, programming languages are are kind of kept separate from the the, the average um, app producer, as it were. Um, I, I don't know exactly because I, I, I haven't seen enough recently. But um, yeah, I, I did some reasonably hardcore stuff at the time, but nothing amazing. Yeah. It was just just enough to get the project done. Right? <laughs> Does it work? Yeah, ship it, leave. <laughs> yeah no doubt um so hopefully that answered your question clay um i know we kind of went into a tangent there yeah um, sorry i went on a bit <laughs> no that's that's totally cool um let's me draw more no <laughs> um el guapo comics is in here saying hello how are you doing man it's good to have you um scott I, and i'd rather be drawing Oh, he's talking to Van, but let's see, his first comics, 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge. Oh, he was just saying, okay, so uh, the 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge really helped my discipline, and honestly, that discipline has helped bleed over into other aspects of my life as well. Oh, man, yeah, I mean, mm. I credit that challenge with so much. I mean, I, I, I talk about it many times on, on here, and, and it's just... It's revolutionized my creative life, that's for sure. Um, and yeah, I guess it has bled into my other life, the, my, you know, re I guess real life or the rest of my life, I should say. Um, in that, you know, I do, I, I have an approach now when there's something kind of um, 
daunting or overwhelming, I kind of have an approach now. I can put it into little chunks or spend a little bit of time on it every day or, you know, at least do something today. You know, like mm-hmm. if, I, if I have a situation, you know, instead of procrastinating, I can at least do something today. And when I start doing that something, a lot of times that'll end up making me either finish it or, you know, it, it'll just cause me to get progress when I wasn't, you know, I probably would have procrastinated in another life, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely helpful um, for sure. Oguapo, Oguapo Comics says, I just finished 26 pages of the first chapter of my Indiegogo comic graphic novel. There is a great sense of accomplishment, but there's also the next 26 pages that are <laughs> due immediately. <laughs> oh, man. Well, congratulations on doing that. There's, yeah, uh, well done. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm sure your comic is awesome. I, I definitely would be interested in checking it out. But I'll tell you, like, I have more respect and admiration for anybody who does comics. Like, I don't care if you are doing a little mini comic and you suck at drawing or if you're doing, you know, weekly or monthly comics or whatever. Like, to, to draw, write, a comic to put together a full comic is like, it's not easy. <laughs> no, no, it's not. And and people um, underplay just how hard it is. Yeah, absolutely. And there's just so much to think about, you know, when you're trying to put together a comic and when you're trying to lead people through a story and also focus on, you know, drawing correct anatomy and proportions and mm. also focus on, you know, all kinds of different things. So, you know, there's just, there, there's so much to making comics. So I, I applaud you and anybody else who has made a comic. Like it's, it's freaking awesome. An awesome task to have accomplished for sure. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, Clay says, that's cool. I'd rather be drawing. Okay. Right smack in the middle of my 100 days. And I'm not sure if it's directly affected my discipline. It's helped rearrange my priorities sort of discipline i guess <laughs> oh yeah no doubt yeah. Just, yeah just putting things in order and knowing that you have to do them that's that's yeah that's good well you know that's the thing too is like we don't um it's easy to value the thing that has to get done that has to pay the bills and then forget about the other stuff, you know, mm. stuff that maybe is the reason why you got into it. Um, you know, so there's kind of that, there, there's a lot of aspects to that, but um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's easy to not, not value our personal projects because, you know, we can always get to them, you know, someday, you know, it's like, yeah, it, yeah. it's not, it's not paying our bills necessarily. And, you know, even if we do, it, do do it is, is it going to be a big risk? Is anybody going to care? So I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I personally have more and more as I've been doing this, gotten to the point where I, it's, it's the most important thing actually. And if I, if I do have some kind of client work, um, which happens once in a while, um, I still need to make sure I prioritize my personal stuff because or else it won't get done. And really client work, it, like my goal is to get my intellectual properties out there to yeah. make comics. And, you know, I want to make my own stories and sell those. And, and that's where my goal is. And so every time I stop that goal to, go and work on you know something that's just going to give me a little cash to pay some bills well that's just as that's very important too but it's not progressing my goal at all you know no it can be seen as wasted time right um, which which you i mean all practice is good um mm-hmm. def, definitely the whole ten thousand hour thing i uh, i would say my artwork has improved exponentially since 2010 when i started mm-hmm. and you know i sat down to draw in 2010 and i got a couple of um i got a couple of low-paid jobs to get me going and uh uh yeah i thought i was doing okay 
um, arrogant I was. Um, and uh, and I look back on that work now and think, oh, my God, that's so terrible. <laughs> but I, I know all artists think that, but, but I can really see a progression of when I sat down and started to do it every day. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it really makes a big difference. Uh, I think I answered a question to someone else a while ago, and it, it doesn't matter whether you're doing it full time or whether you're just doing half an hour a day or whatever, practice constant. It, it it will add up it is it, it does all add up to to a result in the end and um sitting down and doing it full time has has made a massive difference to my work um if nothing else just where you where you pick up cheats along the way you start doing things shorthand um mm. so something that i'm always really impressed with is people who can play musical instruments and i i, I worked with a guy at one point who um who was a fantastic uh, guitarist and he'd show me riffs and what have you stuff that he was doing. He'd say, Oh, but this is a shortcut and it would sound fantastic. I'm thinking, what does he mean by a shortcut? And I never really truly understood because I can't play a musical instrument, but, mm. but I kind of understand now because there's shortcuts in your mind and also some of the techniques that you use that you get over visually what you want without struggling to do every single detail or every single aspect of a drawing and um some of that comes out in style and some of that comes just simply just comes out in in you being able to do things slightly quicker and um definitely just keep going keep practicing keep doing it yeah it makes cool. a difference yeah it's something um i was actually chatting with my buddy uh, mike emirates the other day and um he was I was telling him how, you know, as much as I've learned about drawing faces and stuff like that, I still feel like I don't know how I draw faces yet. Like, and I've mm. done, I've drawn so many heads, so many faces. Um, and when, now, you know, when I go to draw a comic, I, I don't really feel like I'm doing it the way I do it. I'm, I'm just still working it out every time. And, um, I don't know, like, he, and, and he said, you know, well, you know, just see if you can do a challenge of like a hundred faces or yeah. you know, a thousand or whatever. And he said, if you just keep doing it over and over and over again, you're going to start to develop shorthand um, yeah. things. And that made a lot of sense to me. So something. Uh, that he's got that absolutely good. right. Absolutely right. Yeah. And, and I know what you mean about that. Is that me drawing that face or is that? Um, me trying to get it right, or is that me being affected by all the other faces that I've seen drawn? Um, it's very important that people need to look at other artists and see what other artists do right, and even start off by tracing and um, and copying those artists so that they can feel the uh, shapes that those artists create so that mm. they can get an idea for how that physically, how that feels in your hands. Um, but eventually you have to strike out on your own. Uh, it took me a long time to understand that. Um, and it, it, you don't want to look like anyone else and you don't want to be looking at other comic books or other comic strip artists for reference. You want to be looking at them for inspiration and for their techniques and, and like I say, how a shape might work physically in your hands and on and, and on paper or screen but you want to come up with your own style and you definitely don't want to be using comic book for instance anatomy as your reference guide <laughs> you want to be look you want to be looking at real people and um doing life drawing and uh and and obviously checking up lots of uh photographic reference which is the one thing that the internet is so fantastic for i can't imagine yeah, I look back at some of the artists that I loved and the kind of things they drew every day, all the time, and they didn't have the internet. I know. They'd have had to have gone outside and looked at it, or they'd have gone down the library or gone to, and watched it on the TV or a VHS tape or something back in the day. Um, and now we can literally just go into Google and go, oh, right, well, uh, I want a horse. Oh, I've got some horses. And you can see that you can even get really, you know, really good anatomy uh uh, tutorials on horses and stuff so you know that you can nail a horse in a comic strip you know right. that you can do it because it's there on the internet you can go find it um and that that is that that's just 
an amazing tool and it's i know that that sped up my artwork um be, uh, no end it just really has so yeah definitely reference from real life and um other artists as inspiration and and just like you say getting to a point where you're comfortable with drawing things the way you want to draw them and you're sort of repeating your own style as it were and and, and making and perfecting it over a period of time absolutely yeah and i think um because i do draw a lot from reference um but I think uh, kind of the thing that Mike was saying was to do it like kind of in a small period of time, do it over mm -hmm. and over again. Yeah. Um, kind of set a goal, a specific goal, because, you know, I don't, I don't really do it quite like that. I just do it here and there, you know, but mm -hmm. do it over and over in a short period of time. I think you start to develop those, uh, you know, those shorthand things like you're saying, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I did a video of, of, um, I've only, I, I, I tend not to do. I, I try. I don't want to call them tutorials because I, I, I think everybody has their own way of doing things. So it's more like a, an insight into the way that I see how I draw and the things and the techniques that I use. But I did a, a sort of an insight a video on faces and putting character into faces, and I think I did eight faces and just like, literally, you just put down a, a an egg for a head shape and then you know two or three crosses to get where the eyes nose and mouth are going to be and then you just draw something in and you just keep drawing them and he's exactly right you just draw lots of different faces lots of different sizes and it it, it encourages you to um to make people look different to make characters look different uh, something that jimmy palmiotti said to me is um make sure the noses are different on your faces Hmm. Um, he said, um, because you don't want everybody to look like they're related. <laughs> I was like, oh, right. Okay. Yeah. He said, you, 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 you've got faces, you're doing really well. He says, but there's a few faces there that, that kind of like the nose is very similar. So think about the noses, think, you know, draw from photographs of people, go and go and find photographs of people and look at them. And, and it's that, it's that making that difference, you know, in between your characters and, and, and uh, accentuating certain aspects of, of characteristics on faces uh, it's really important and it's always great to go and get advice from other people like i say J jimmy palmiotti um, and peter's great obviously love peter um and and i spoke to jimmy uh on uh on twitter and uh he just gave me some free advice and it's it's really nice to get those kind of tips from people who, who are in the industry who've been in it a long time know exactly what they're doing so, yeah. yeah, absolutely. I wonder where Jimmy was when Liefeld was starting to figure out how to draw faces. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Liefeld was learning how to draw, draw faces about the same time he was drawing feet, I think. <laughs> I've, I've got a lot of time for Rob Liefeld simply because he's um, he's just got out there and done it. You know, you've got to admire what he's done. Um, yeah. I think I saw some recent artwork from him that was pretty good, actually. Um, so it's it's nice to think that he's taken as long as I have to get my artwork right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He he's he. I'm a big Rob Liefeld fan, but yeah, I can. I mean, he doesn't. It, it's hard to defend him sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of that. I mean, that the, the famous Captain America drawing with the the pumped up chest is just. Um, it's a hideous, hideous drawing. Makes you wonder if he was on drugs when he went through that. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Um, but yeah, um, that's that's really cool that you were able to get that advice. Um, and it's interesting because noses. I've been thinking about noses uh, as I draw, mm. and um, I think that. For me, it's easy to focus on noses, which is weird. But the thing is, is probably the feature that it's like right smack dab in the middle of the face. But the feature that I think people think of the least probably is is people's noses. You know, mm -hmm. you maybe look at somebody's mouth when you look at them or you look at their eyes when you look at them. But you don't often like sit there and spend time looking at their nose. No. And I think there's something in that as far as drawing, like, 
it, it's probably a good idea to kind of downplay the nose mm -hmm. uh, and, and just not put a lot of emphasis there. And it's easy for me to not do that for some reason. I don't know why, <laughs> but uh, I guess you just get into the details and you get lost in it or something. But <laughs> I often obsess over uh, things. So I'll, I'll, um, I remember um, when, I, when, I was drawing, when I was drawing Doctor Who, um, I was obsessing over noses because Peter Cabaldi had a very big nose. Hmm. And uh, so I'd be trying to draw different noses. And um, I, and then there was Draw the Marvel way as well, where I was, I had actually did a, <laughs> I think I did a couple of um, facial features uh, tutorials and one of them was on noses. And um, you, you just suddenly you start looking at them and thinking, oh, how do they really work? I've been doing this shorthand nose for a long time now. Maybe it just isn't right. And then you become obsessed with something like that or obsessed with hands. I'm obsessed with hands at the moment. Um, yeah. Yeah. Fingers are just so difficult to draw and make them look natural as well. Yeah. That's the thing. Probably the most important parts of anatomy are hands and um, and just, I guess, the face in general. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And, yeah, if you can get those down right, you mm. can a lot of other things wrong and kind of be okay i think mm. but I mean, it'll be hard to get down right <laughs> yeah mouths are, are difficult notoriously difficult mm. um I, I uh a few years back uh jimmy uh not jimmy charlie adlard had a look at my portfolio um i'd uh I'd, i think that year I'd, i li literally just got the job on doctor who so I'd, I'd managed to get myself in somewhere but i was also drawing some comics for unstoppable comics i don't know if you've heard of those guys um it's a guy called jd rosario and he, he's uh from new york and um th this guy jd is fantastic he's such a, a good businessman and um he he runs uh unstoppable comics and he gets other people to come in and draw the comics for him and um i met him early on about about 2012 2011 i think 2011 uh, i bumped into jay and i've been drawing on and off different books for him ever since mm. and um so i was drawing a book for him and i, I felt i'd done really well and, and charlie adlard looked at it and he went yeah he says you, you've, you've really you're, you're like almost there almost he said uh, your mouths he said they're, they're just some of them look like they're just a hole in a someone's face <laughs> he said they, they need a little bit more to them and i i obsessed for it over it for a couple of months and then um kind of came to terms with 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 what i should be doing with mouths and uh, uh looking at photographs of mouths and actually J uh, charlie at the time said to me he said um he said so th this, i like your work he said what's where is it for and i told him it was for unstoppable comics and he said all right it's a small comics company i said yeah he said did you get paid for it I said, yeah, yeah, I got paid for it. He says, well, he says, that's the only difference between you and me then. He said, I just get paid more, <laughs> which I thought was a really nice thing because it was just, it was, this was Charlie Adler. This is the man from, you know, The Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, he's right up there and he's basically saying, you're just like me. I just happen to get paid a bigger, a better page rate than you got, you know? Um, and uh, it was my first brush with him. He's, it, I, I, I got to, meet him because of uh, a, a mutual friend who uh, a guy called tim quinn who used to edit for marvel and um he he actually gave charlie his first professional gig so um it, it was just it was just um fate that i happened to bump into him but i thought that was a really nice thing to say because basically that's a that's a nod to everybody in comics mm. if if you're out there and you're you know you're making something that people are willing to buy I think I made this point over the weekend on, on your feed, actually, on, on your um, uh, live stream, mm. um, that it, it, whether you're getting paid for it, like a page rate or something like that, or whether it, all it is is simply that somebody is willing to part money and pay for your production, that makes you a pro. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't, it, you don't have to be working for Marvel to be a pro. You know, you don't have to be getting paid a massive page rate as long as somebody is willing to pay for your work in some form or another you're a professional absolutely and then it's just about living up to that to that term you have to live up to the term of being a professional by bringing your a game to everything you can and 
also being nice to people on Twitter. <laughs> which, well, which a lot of professionals be, not doing that one. So no, it seems to be a blood sport over on Twitter <laughs> at the moment. So. That's funny. Um, but yeah, yeah, I I totally agree, and uh, yeah, it's it's difficult, but it, it's you know, like you said, you know, just being in the game is really the main thing, you know. So. Mm. Um, and it, there's so much good stuff coming out at the moment. This, I mean, India has blown up. It's gone crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I want, I sometimes wonder if, uh, what's going to be the thing that separates, you know, people. Cause it's always, there's always that thing. It's like you get too much of one thing and, and something's got to break free to, to kind of like, how do you stand out now? You mm. know, there's a lot of Indies out there and there's a lot of people doing really good work too. Oh yeah, there's some fantastic. So how stand out, you know. It's not even necessarily about, you know, oh, I'll stand out because I just do better work. Well, there's probably twenty other guys out there who are doing stuff just as good as you. So now, mm. what? like, <laughs> well, I think that's why YouTube is is great, um, and what I've seen of what you're doing and what Peter's doing, mm. um, and several other people as well around, you know, d different um, channels. Is, is making it you know, what social media is supposed to be, social. So mm. my, my view is you have an industry and you have to make money. That's what an industry is. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a community. It's a business. Mm. We're all in the business of entertaining and people pay for that entertainment. They pay for your book or whatever it might be. Um, but within the industry, you have community of art, of creatives, and that's exactly what's going on on YouTube at the moment, which is why I was drawn to it. Um, it because there's, you know, there's so many independent people on there, independent creators making great work. And, uh, you know, um, they're, they're picking up audiences. Mm. And, uh, and those audiences are then in some way, because it's not just about how good your work is or how, how attracted they are to the story. There's also character involved. There's also the fact that they feel connected to a creator and that's how you stand out. You don't stand out to everybody. You just stand out to the people that, that will come to you as it were, you, you make an audience for yourself. Um, mm. And I think um, I think there's potential. I think there's there's enough room for everybody at the moment. Uh, and and I think also cream does rise to the top. I think if you're going to produce good work, um, you know, artistically as well as uh, from from a writing perspective, people will come find it. Yeah, yeah, I, I think you're right. Um, and I think that's kind of part of the, what the game is. I mean, a lot of us, I don't know, in the circles that I am running in so far, a lot of us are just getting to the point where we're finally making our first book, you know. Mm. Uh, we're, we're kind of, a lot of us are somewhere around amateur to novice level, and, you know, we're starting to finally put our books out. And, and, and uh, you know, I think we're still working our way up to kind of a, a pro level you, and, and there's a big range, you know, some people are more at the pro level, but they haven't put a book out or some people have put a bunch of books out, but they need to up their game. I'm probably on that, that part of it. Um, that, that image I'm looking at at the moment is press pretty good. I like that. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's, that's really good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is the thing is I'm, I'm doing a fun, you know, kind of fan art thing and it's like, I wouldn't do this in a comic, you know, cause it's mm. too much detail. You know, I don't have yeah. that much detail in a comic, but when I'm doing one illustration, you know, it's fun to noodle around and do a bunch of crazy details and stuff. So, um, but yeah, you're right. There is a, there is a range of, of, of content out there. Um, but I think something that people, I think something that people are missing at the moment that they had, for instance, in the silver and bronze age, if you look back at some of the artwork in the Silver and Bronze Age, some of it just was not that good. Yeah, mm. if if you look at it purely from a perspective of, you know, how right it is as far as anatomy and you know th those kind of things, right? Technically correct, yeah. but but a lot of the artwork was very passionate and fun, mm. and comics are missing 
And certainly the mainstream comics are missing fun at the moment. They're, ma they're, they're coming up with this faux fun. It's not really fun. It's what the executives tell you is fun. Mm. Um, and it, it's, not, uh, it's, it's not hitting the mark, I don't think. Some of it is, uh, but most of it isn't. And, and that's why indies, uh, I think, are going to do well, because people are passionate, really passionate about their own projects. And then that that leads me to my point where I think it's not just about coming to a finished artist or a finished creator. A lot of the people that are coming into YouTube to see artists and comic creators put, put their stuff together, they're seeing a journey occur. Mm. That Like you used to, you know, you, you look back at the early art of Jim Lee and it was very different to the art he's producing now. And to have witnessed that along the way and be able to buy the comics, you feel like you're part of it. Well, this is even deeper than that. People can come along and listen to us talking about crap <laughs> and feel like they know us in some way, and then they too can become creators and other people can go and see them. And, and you get to understand or you get to appreciate the journey that people are on and how they've improved their work and, and how you've been part of that improvement process by buying their book. So yeah. I, I think there's there's more interaction to be had now than ever before. And that's why I think there's more room in the market for people than ever before, even though, like you say, it's quite daunting to see so many books come out at once. You know, it's yeah, I think there's still room there for people. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I mean, obviously, I, I, you know, believe in that, you know, because I'm, I'm pretty active in doing just that. Yeah you're saying um so yeah yeah and, and i guess posing that question is kind of more like well what do we do well i think you just kind of answered it it's almost like a uh let's think about it you know type of question mm. and and uh yeah i think that uh that's one thing and this one I, is one that i learned um i mean i've always known some of these things on some level but something that I've seen confirmed through watching Gary V a lot lately, um, which I talk about sometimes and, um, is just documenting the, um, process, um, journaling the process, the, the journey and stuff like that, like you were saying. And, um, you know, I'm not necessarily the best artist. There's a lot of people, a lot of people who are much better than me. Um, at this point but at the same time there's not a lot of people who are sharing as much as me um, no you've, you've absolutely nailed it something that uh, doug to naple is doing at the moment um which uh i, I feel a little bit sort of oh, i was going to do that <laughs> but he's sharing the whole process mm. from writing thumbnails right the way through something that you're doing you're 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 really opening yourself up to a set of uh viewers to to it's like um um you've got these uh um what's the word for it um when when you've got uh, real real life um dramas uh oh like, uh, like uh, reality tv or something reality tv that's it sorry that's that's me being a boomer um uh re reality tv and and effectively this this is that's what youtube is all about reality tv isn't it but Absolutely. this is this is your own built-in documentary about your journey as a comic strip creator. And people can buy the books when they come out. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, that's a special thing. And, and it, it's also, I mean, not everybody is going to draw comics. Not everybody is going to be a coder. Not everybody's going to be a, a, an athlete. So there's always going to be a restricted number of people who are going to be doing X skilled thing. And then a restricted number within that who are prepared to open themselves up to let other people share the journey like you're doing or like Doug to Naples is doing. And that's exactly what I wanted to do with my book, which is why my crowdfunding will be at the end of it or at, the, at least no more than, than two thirds, three quarters of the way through. I'm going to start by showing what I'm doing. So I'll show the build up to the process, show my artwork off, show obviously not completely. Otherwise, people will know the, the story. But just like you're doing, let people into your creative process and they can feel like part of it. And then when they get the book, they've got the hard copy of their of their experience with your journey. Mm. 
and that's that's a really good thing i think that's what people want these days they want more than just sitting back and letting it flow over them they want to feel part of it but but this way they can feel part of it without having to you know get in a chat or without having to ask a question Mm. They, they can they can be a they can passively be part of it and that's something that's never happened before i don't think yeah yeah i think that's that's the advantage we can have so you know i mean it, it does seem to me like um you know we're in a it's weird because we're in we're definitely in a time of like unparalleled opportunity for somebody who's an in, indie creator mm. um but you have to really work hard at it. You can't just like, you know, think, you know, I'm going to throw a couple of images out on Instagram and be a star or something, you know, and I'm no. not, I'm not <laughs> trying to be a star. I just no. read comics and have people, you know, share them with people who like them. Yeah. But <laughs> I know, I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, I think now's the opportunity for people who are prepared to put the effort in mm. who will benefit from it. Now, you, you can't just do some fan art. I mean, that's something that obviously um, Tumblr was all about, doing lots and lots of cal arts and fan arts and what have you, and hoping that someone would pick you from obscurity and put you on a book or put you on some animation. And it has happened, but it's like it's happened for one or two people. Right. But but there's always been that hard work. Comics is hard work. Mm-hmm. And if you put the effort and the love in, you'll get something out of it. And... Uh, that's that's where the opportunities are for indie creators now. I think hard work and 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 passion will will see the rewards. I think that's actually a really good point too. Like um, that's one thing that's going to separate. You know, bring some separation is the fact that comics are hard work. Mm. And you might see a ton of people doing it, but how many people are going to stick with it over the years? Yeah, I think, I think that's a big part. Like. You need to be dedicated, you know, to to be there all the time. I have a friend of mine who's been doing comics for a lot longer than I have, like as far as like really putting an effort to it. Hmm. And um, you know, he's he does his thing on on the um, you know convention circuit, and he just really he's at every convention in my area and other areas all the time, and he never really misses one. And he always tells me he's like. The only difference between me and everybody else is I'm always here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. That's hard work. I, I know people that are at conventions all the time. Um, I, I've done a few. Uh, I was supposed to do a couple this year and unfortunately events have meant I've not been able to do it, but um, they, they are hard work. <laughs> yeah. And of course um, this is, this is great fun. You and me sitting here chatting and then anybody else is uh, on the chat and we're backwards and forwards, but um it's it's not quite the same as sitting on one side of a, a table and other people, you know, customers coming up and interacting with you in a very close personal way. Um, that's that's a, a whole other thing. That's uh, that's hard work, very hard work. So you don't want to be doing that for more than a day at the time, anyway. Yeah, single day conventions is the uh, is is the way um, to more than more than a more than a day, and I get too tired. I'm too, it's too much for me. <laughs> Yeah, I've never done a multiple day one, um, and I, I do get worn out even from mm. a small convention. Um, but you know, hopefully one day I'll get to the point where I'm doing some more conventions from time to time. But I, I don't think it'll ever become. I don't know. I guess I don't really know. I'm not really talking from what I know for sure. But um, I don't know. My my goal is not to make it ever be like the main thing because no. I just. I, I really like the internet type of mm. <laughs> aspect. I do enjoy being in front of, like, talking to people face-to-face too, but yeah, I just don't think it's effective enough to spend that much time for me, you know? You, you don't. It's it, – if, if we do this video now and we chat and we, you know, we, we show off some of our work and we have maybe 10 people come through the chat or maybe a few more. I, I don't know what the what the average is, but then the video will will go up, and it will be there for as long as YouTube is there, mm-hmm. and and that's that that's a really good use of your time because you're then 
you know, the kind of chat that, that you and I are, are backwards and forwards now and the and any answers that we give to the to the chat um, is exactly the kind of things you would talk to people about at a convention. They would come up and ask you about the work and, you know, they might buy a book from you and ask how it, how the production was and what your thoughts are and can you give me some advice? Because a lot of people at conventions are, you know, frustrated creators. Um yeah and uh so this is a really good use of the time because you're getting all that out people are seeing who you are they're seeing your work and they can sit at their leisure and listen to us drone on about <laughs> the things that that we find interesting about the job um i don't know that conve i think conventions have certainly suffered over the past year 18 months because they they aren't comic book conventions or very few of them are anymore they're multimedia sci-fi conventions um and uh I, I don't think comic strip or comics in general gets anywhere near the percentage of of attention that it used to get in conventions um and i see what we're doing now on the internet as being you know on youtube as being somewhat of a replacement for that, that you know that removal of comic uh comic book artists and what have you from conventions there's the odd one or two i think there was the london one was on uh, it was either last weekend or perhaps the weekend before and i know uh, there's several big names that go there to artist alley um and they make a lot of money in a day because they're big names um i could go there and i could make nothing in a day <laughs> because nobody knows who the hell i am so you know it's uh, it, it's tricky uh, to, to know where your time is best served and it like you say it is nice to go out to conventions and talk to people directly face to face but you know what you, you've got to look at what what uh what best serves your time what what is uh what is most useful to you yeah yeah no doubt um speaking about <clears throat> treating this kind of thing as a little bit of a convention let's get back to the chat for a minute <laughs> um uh raul or Asco, or Asco, hopefully I'm saying that right, is in here. How you doing, man? Um, just began learning how comic books are made and would like to know if I should get copyright for characters that I made. What do you think about that, Russ? Um, how, to, how to make them? Uh, no, he's wondering um, if he should you know, pursue getting a uh, copyright, his stuff. Uh, I don't think you need to worry about that. If you're, if, if your characters are unique, uh, as in they're not derivative of other people's characters. And by that, I mean, directly derivative as in, I'm going to, I'm going to make a spider, spider man or spider guy. Um, and it's just that uh, the webbing is going to look a bit different and he's going to have a bit more blue, then you're obviously derivative, okay? Mm -hmm. So there's no point in putting a copyright on that. Um, and then from the other perspective, if you've got something that's unique, that's yours, and that you've created, uh, I, I think the copyright is simply inherent. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a, a, a legal advisor, but um, I think the first time you go out there and use them so even if you're just posting your your characters online giving them a name and saying it's created by me then that's effectively your your proof because there'll be a date stamp on that and you'll have done it and that's the end of it i, I don't think you need to specifically copyright characters um in that way but uh, you know i may be wrong that's just what i've done in the past yeah i think um i think it, you can if you're really concerned about it you can print them out, sign them, put the date on, and then go to the post office and send them to yourself. And then right. never never open the, the envelope. <laughs> so then you've got a direct date stamp of your intellectual property, and it's been sent to you via the post office and with a, you know, with a registered stamp on it. Yeah, I've actually heard um, I've heard that a lot, but I've actually heard recently that that doesn't work anymore. Does it not? All right. Um, That's but, a boom boomer in me. That's my boomer answer. <laughs> well, you know, this that's probably the answer I would have given before I heard something different, like mm. you know, a couple months ago. So, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I think um, personally, I think. 
a lot of people don't really worry about it too much. No. Um, some people do worry about it a lot. Um, I think getting your project done is most important. Um, and try not to get caught up on, on the copyright thing so much. Uh, if you've gotten to the point where you've made your comic book, uh, um, you know, and, and you really want to protect it, you know, send the whole comic book when it's done to the copyright thing. And uh, that will actually, you know, take care of all, everything that's in it will be, you know, yours. It'll be your, uh, you know, your, all your characters. You don't have to, like, try to register every single character individually if you do that. Um, so that Sorry. That? Sorry, I think registering a trademark is very expensive. Mm. Uh, and I think you're right. I think just um, being quite relaxed about it because most people, you know, creators are out there, they want to create their own unique thing. Um, and uh, I think uh, if it was proven that you'd stolen somebody else's idea, nobody would buy it. Mm. Yeah, I, th I think there's a there's a kind of a, a crowd justice almost. Um, yeah. I, I don't think it would go down particularly well. I suppose maybe like someone like Warner Brothers could come along and do it. And they wouldn't give them monkeys because they've got so many, so much money. They could do what they like, but I think it's unlikely. Yeah, that's, that's a it's a famous oh. last words, but I think it's unlikely. Yeah, although I will say though, there is a history, you know, in comics of having <laughs> issues with this, you know, for sure. I mean, even the greats, you know. Kirby and Stan Lee, you know, and, yeah. and all these other people have fought over the rights of things. So there's a certain degree where you want to you want to use some some wisdom, but um, you know it, it's kind of really up to you. Um, you know, just create your thing, and then once you once you've created your thing, maybe start thinking about that. But there's a lot of evidence, you know, online. Mm. Like, create something especially when you publish it i mean you run a kickstarter and you know if you if you do things like russ and i do or where you're you know showing a little bit of the process and stuff i mean the evidence is there that you are the creator of that thing you know so i feel like you know if there were to be an issue you can kind of point to some of that stuff you know yeah i think you're absolutely right yeah um so um yeah, that's that's an interesting question. Um, it's definitely one that is worth thinking about and, and coming to your own conclusion about. Um, of course, as uh, Russ said, we can't give out legal advice. We're not lawyers, but um, yeah, appreciate the question. Uh, what else? He said, uh, I would like to post drawings of my characters, but I'm unsure if I should get copyright before I do this. Again, it, it kind of... It, it depends on, I guess, your own personal level of paranoia, I guess. <laughs> um, and, you know, I will just say that most people I know don't copyright their stuff. Um, it's funny. I actually put out a question. I put this similar question out recently on Facebook. I just asked my fellow creators. I'm like, do you guys copyright your stuff? I'm just curious if other people do. Mm. And I started to get answers back, and I was like, oh, interesting. And then after um, a couple hours of it being up, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to take this down just in case some of my friends are saying, no, I don't copyright my stuff. Oh, okay. Well, I'll go yeah. copyright your stuff. You know, <laughs> somebody <laughs> might take advantage of that situation. Yeah. We <laughs> uh, just be a little more careful about this. <laughs> I, I think you're right. I think that, that, that um, be a little careful about it and you'll be fine. Um, <laughs> like you say, if, if 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 you're putting up a, a post and saying I've created this um, this character and here's my picture and you put it up on Facebook, um, I don't know what the Facebook rights are like, but obviously you you by by putting up that picture and stating that it's yours with a date stamp, that's pretty much showing that it's yours in that period of time. Mm. So um, it would be difficult to then prove otherwise. I think. Yeah, totally. Uh, let's see. Bring up the chat again. Uh, Michael Lahitin, how you doing, man? Uh, do it right a thousand times and no one will remark. Muck it up once and you'll never hear the end of it. <laughs> yeah. that's, uh, that's very true for a lot of things. I'm not that's quite sure what you were refer referencing, but yeah, that's 
for sure true. <laughs> I guess probably we're talking about doing, you know, learning about how to draw faces well and things yeah. like that and the uh, kind of Liefeld phenomenon and stuff like that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Uh, Clay says, share your work, man. It can be frightening showing your work and not knowing where it might go, but sharing your characters will give you the opportunity to see them in a new light. light. And yeah, I mean, that's the thing too, is it's all about risk assessment too. Like, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of, a lot of artists actually do get their stuff stolen and people take their stuff. And I'm not saying necessarily comics, but like just people who are illustrators, a lot of times get their stuff stolen and somebody will take their image. They'll even mm -hmm. leave, watermark on it sometimes or they'll go in yeah. and get the watermark out and they'll throw it on a on a mug or throw it on a t-shirt or whatever it is and they'll sell it on their own store or whatever and people get called out for that though too you know yeah yeah I, I think that's in all fairness that's the kind of thing that you don't really have to worry about i mean there's, there's not a lot you can do about it mm. so you know don't don't get any sleep don't have any sleepless nights over it it's more along the lines of if i come up with a character and i write a story about it and it's really good and people like it and then some you know corporate decides to steal it for themselves that that's when you need to be able to go back and go whoa whoa no that's mine you can't have that without paying me um and yeah people that make t-shirts and mugs uh should be should be paying for the copyright but you've got to know which which battles to fight um and you know marvel might have the money to put a cease and desist on someone for making t-shirts or prints but the rest of us don't so yeah. you've got to, you've got to know which battle to fight really and honestly you can kind of take a le lesson from marvel as well or these other companies because how often do they put a cease and desist very on? rarely you're you're exactly right i mean I, I look around and i see the amount of people that that ha have prints of uh you know marvel characters i mean i have prints of marvel characters but i would say that i have actually been paid by marvel to draw their characters right um so i i feel and this is only feeling obviously this isn't a legality Le legally i should not draw their characters anywhere but where they've paid for me to draw them mm. but i think they turn a blind eye to people uh, especially the artists who have worked for them that they can do commissions and the occasional poster and what have you. And as long as they're not printing up 20,000 t-shirts, um, you know, they, they don't mind people doing that, but from a purely from an artist's perspective, and I, I might sound, I might sound a bit petty saying this, but sometimes you'll go to a, to a convention and you'll see people painting or drawing comic book characters. And you think, well, have you ever actually drawn a comic? <laughs> or are you just recreating those characters for now? So someone comes in and goes, oh, look, we're at a comic convention. Let's buy something. And and I understand everybody's got to have a hustle. You know, everyone's got to make a living. Um, but when you're at a convention and you see someone across the <laughs> someone across from you selling, you know, the, the fifth picture of Iron Man that he's uh, painted straight off the screen or even even copied or traced, uh, you know, from the, from the movie. And you're kind of a bit sort of like, all oh, right, okay, <laughs> I'll go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it can be, it can be frustrating. It can be, but from a go back to what we were saying, from a copyright perspective, you know, I think I saw somebody put one of my pictures on a t-shirt, and I just went, like, well done, that's that's mine. And they said, oh, thanks, you know, sorry. And I was like, eh, it doesn't matter. It, they're not going to be making loads of money out of it, so it's it's advertising. Yeah. So uh, you know, you, you got to learn which battle to fight. Yeah. I mean, even uh, that's a whole nother thing too, is like people who have worked for Marvel and DC. Well, Marvel and DC doesn't necessarily ask you if they can repurpose your artwork, which is unfortunate. They should, no. they should be paying you for every instance they use uh, it. Yeah. You see, that's where the Jack Kirby thing comes in. When you talk yeah. about what did Jack Kirby own? What did he have the intellectual property rights and stuff? And he was obviously a fantastic creator and he, he made all those things. Um, but, but now it's like I was saying earlier, all I wanted to do was draw pages for the big two. So if somebody came to me and said, look, there you go. There's $250 for a page. Uh, do you want to draw Iron Man? I'd be like, yeah. 
<laughs> I'd take my $250 a page and that'd be the end of it. Yeah. I've, I've done my bit. That's theirs now. And if I can keep the artwork and sell it at a show, even better. But if they want to reuse my artwork, it's theirs. It's not mine. And that, and that's the way, you know, page rate, that's the way, you know, work for hire. That's how it works. And that's why it's really, a, it took me a long time to understand, but that's why it's so attractive to have your own intellectual property, to have your own characters. And with the way the market is right now, you know, people are, are hungry for new characters, I believe. Mm. You know, you can never get enough of, of Spider-Man. You can never get enough of Captain America, the X-Men, you know, Wonder Woman, wh whatever. Th these are timeless characters. They're fantastic. But, you know, maybe it'd be nice to have some new ones. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and, and I think I think that's what's going on. And and definitely that's that's what copyright, that's what IP, that, that's that part of it. That's what it's all about, owning your own character and um, knowing what you can do with them, making your own stories, uh, which – is something that never appealed to me before, but now appeals to me greatly. So, yeah, that's interesting, actually. Um, that you know, you go into say a comic book shop back in I don't know the '90s or the '80s or something, maybe more the '80s. Um, and I don't know you, or even if you, I guess it doesn't matter where. Like even on a newsstand, you see some some comics and stuff and there's plenty of titles you know you recognize you, you know this the spider-man you know the you know superman batman all that stuff and then what if there's like a comic there that you've never heard of you know maybe you see like a cerebus there or mm. something or like you know a bone or something like that like it's interesting the um perception back then compared to now mm. you know you see like that now and it, it's kind of attractive to see a comic you've never heard of it's interesting you're like what's that you know but back then it's like oh well that's that's probably like subpar stuff it's yep. probably not the real comics you know isn't that what <laughs> i i think it and i think that's changing it's radically changing and it's 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 rapidly changing as well the, mm. the, the perception of comics is is uh it's really uh, it's undergoing such a huge change and um and I think people will be looking. It's like uh, seeing comics or comic books as a, as like an artisan product now instead of a mass media product. I, I love pulp. I, I think comics should be pulp. They should be coming out once a week or once a month, and mm -hmm. they should be throwaway items. The whole the whole comic collectors aspect pretty much ruined the the industry. I understand why people collect them, but but invest it, it, uh, injecting this whole sort of um collecting them for the sake of collecting them for money that that didn't help at all i mean i have a collection but i don't collect the books because i i want to keep them for later so that i can sell them i collect the books because i love them and because i want to keep rereading them that's why i have them it's my passion but as soon as you interject this whole sort of buying for finance you know financial gain that's no good and then on top of that they took them off the newsstands and they went to the the local comic, you know, LCSs. And I love comic shops. I absolutely adore them. But it's not a way to grow a market into the normie world. You need to have comics in newsprint uh, on spinner racks in your local pharmacy or your local uh, 7-Eleven or whatever it is so that kids wander in there and go, oh, right, this is it. It's only 99 cents or $1.50. I'll have one of them. Again, like... Peter Sametti and what Al Turner is doing. That's exactly what how you regrow a mainstream comic industry. But I don't I think it might be too little too late. And um, so what's happening now is you've got this artisan um, quality product uh, that you get involved with on with the creators on YouTube and that you see how it grows and you see their story as well as the the, the story that you're buying into and then you crowdfund it so you're part of it and then you get a quality product sent to you there's a completely different um mindset to the way comics used to be mm. but I, I think i think there's a market there. i think there's an industry there and uh that's definitely where i'm going <laughs> now it's interesting um you did talk about a little bit about this before um you wanting to do your own um property and 
you've kind of mentioned it a couple times. Do, would you say, like, I'm curious, and, and in my opinion, all motivations, well, no, I shouldn't say all motivations, but hmm. the motivation to do it for money is just as valid as the motivation to do it, uh, you know, just for the art of it or whatever. And I think both of those motivations are actually wrapped up together a lot of times for us yeah. creators. Um, but I am curious, uh, w was it because of the industry kind of changing that made you excited to do your own comic or, or was it a mix of both where you yeah. kind of just felt like you wanted to or you had some ideas that were I, coming? Yeah, it was, it was a mix of both. Um, so I, I would have been happy to have taken page rates and just done, just done uh, books for other people. For, for a while longer yet, I think. Um, seeing the industry change in the way that it is, you have to change with it. Um, so you have to adapt. Um, and uh, I think um, having your own product out there is is the way to adapt now. Um, also, you know, all of the big comic companies will say, don't come after us, we'll find you. Mm. And the only way to do that is to put your books out. Mm. Um, and as much as I'd um, I'd been involved with some very good writers, I felt that I wanted to do it all myself. Mm -hmm. um, speaking to what you were talking about as far as money is concerned, I feel that being paid for doing this or getting some kind of financial recompense for it is integral to the pleasure of doing it. Mm. So when I was a kid, I wanted to draw comics, but I didn't just want to draw comics. I wanted to draw comics for Marvel. I wanted to be good enough that somebody would pay me to do that as a job. Yeah. And so you have this creative input, but you also have this value system that people consider you, your talent valuable or your skills valuable. And the idea that my artistic creative skills, drawing comics, telling stories, providing visual entertainment are valuable enough for someone to pay me to do it. Now, I used to always think along the lines of page rates and, and still do to a degree because obviously I'm in a, I'm a, I'm a freelance illustrator and I do, I work for hire. So, you know, somebody, somebody gives me a brief, I do it and I get paid for it. And that's the, the simple analogy of it. That's, that's it. Um, but also wanting to connect and tell a story and uh, connect personally. I think that's driven me towards, doing something for myself rather than doing something for someone else. Mm. Also the opportunity has arisen as well because of the work that I've done in the last year, it's given me the opportunity to take some time to do the book that I want to do rather than doing it um, in between other work. Like I was saying, I'm not very good at focusing uh, at sh in short periods. I, I'm, I'm better at saying, right, I've got a day to do this or two days to do that or a week to do that. Um, and the idea of saying, right, okay, I'm going to make myself do something for an hour every day. I'm just not very good at. So it was never, it was never an attractive option for me, but the idea that I've now put together enough work that I can say, right, I'm going to take it to a couple of months and I'm going to draw my own book and I'm going to give it the attention it deserves. That's also an opportunity that has arisen recently that has encouraged me to say, yes, right, okay, it's it's my IP, it's my book that I need to be doing, not a book for someone else. Mm. Cool. That's awesome. Um, yeah, it's funny, I, I, I've always wanted to just make my own creations, um, and I've wanted to, um, I, I don't know why, but I've always wanted to share them. Like, I, I've spent a lot of time thinking about why is it that we like to share these things, or, you know, why is it, not you know just as good for me just to create it and then put it in a drawer somewhere like it just isn't for some reason um but also i i have wanted to make it my career so i've always felt that those two aspects of it have been kind of fighting each other mm. but i'm i'm i you know growing up and stuff and learning the ways of the world and realize mm. a lot of different things i've I think there's start to be a little bit more synthesis there where there wasn't before. Um, and, and it's all wrapped up together. It's mm, definitely, I, I think there's a bit of narcissism there. Mm. I think we're, um, as creators, as, as comic strip artists, you're kind of, um, invisible actors 
mm. you're playing on a stage that no one can see so every every day you 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 draw sequential art for a, for a book you're the cameraman and the director uh for your script writer and uh you're also the actor for every panel you put characters in you're acting each one of those characters so um as much as i don't want to admit it to myself there's probably some narcissism there so when you've finished your project you want people to look at it you want people to be part of it you want people to enjoy it um and also to you know be impressed by it there's, you know th there's no doubt about that um so uh you can understand why uh, some comic strip artists go off the deep end <laughs> um because of that narcissism but um i think it's in all of us to a degree yeah. but i i, I de definitely a, a big part of of my drive is that i've never grown up yeah. and uh you know i i just picking up those comics when i was a kid and thinking i wanted to be part of the bullpen i wanted to be drawing comics for stanley yeah that was, that was it and it then it's never left me it's never ever left me um now I, I i'm not much of a celebrity person i i don't i can't be doing with it all and and all the um all the drama that's been going on on both sides of the culture war over the past three mm. years i you know I, I think i did a video a little while ago about um yeah about uh toxic fans and i don't think any fans are toxic i think everybody's got an opinion and they've got a right to their opinion and as you as a creator you're putting yourself out there and if people don't like your work and they tell you well you've just got to put up with it really um because you've got to think yourself lucky that they want to give the time for your creation mm. um so i'm not big on celebrity and i'm not big on all this you know getting upset about a film like it don't like it you know don't, don't watch it there's always an off switch um and uh although you know don't get me wrong i do enjoy a good a good science fiction film and i'm very shallow <laughs> i i only really like films with big guns and you know ray guns and aliens in and stuff <laughs> um so uh, i like a lot of crap movies and and i don't you know i'm unapologetic about it it's it's just fun i just want to be entertained mm -hmm. um and it doesn't mean that people shouldn't have politics in the work just i just don't want to see it uh, because that's not what i consider entertainment so getting to my point like i say i'm not into celebrity and all that stuff but when stan lee went i have to say i was a bit i was a bit moist died yeah. <laughs> my my father died uh last december oh, and yeah. um it was it was around i can't remember the exact date but i know it wasn't far off and um i think it might have been before my dad died actually and um you know that whole period of time it you know it, it that affected me because stan lee was something that had been with me since i was a child almost as long as my dad <laughs> and uh you know he I, he was he was just this icon an icon of entertainment of fun um simple honest good entertainment mm -hmm. and, and that's all i want to do in my book and that's all I really want to do. You know, somebody paid me. If somebody said, okay, here you go, you know, it's, uh, it's $250 a page. Go draw Captain America. I'd just jump at it. I really would. I'd jump at it. Even, even now, wanting my own book, I'd still jump at that. Yeah. But, but that doesn't mean that I'm any less intense and, uh, yeah, in into my own book. I, I am. That's, and and it's, that, it's the same. It's for the same reason. It's for that childhood re reason of wanting to in entertain with those, you know, action-filled, fun comic books. So there you go. Yeah, I, I think there's... bared my soul to everybody who wants to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think there's something to that, though. Like, like we, uh, I think us as comic creators. We just kind of never stop playing with our toys. <laughs> no, <laughs> another level. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I totally can relate with that for sure. Um, and I don't know. There's something good about that, though. Like I don't think. Yeah. That, uh, I think that those who who didn't do that um, are missing something. To be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. There's something. There's something a little naive about it, but there's there's also something. Uh, honest and and true about it and uh, it's good for you it's mm -hmm. definitely good for you mm -hmm. and on that note i'm gonna have to go 
Okay, yeah, it's I was been, gonna get ready to uh, kind of close it out. Anyways, I'm gonna. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, been an absolute pleasure talking to you, Marsh. I, I oh, really, really is. Here. Um, and I can't tell you how much you're an inspiration because you work so hard, and you put out some fantastic stuff. So. Um, oh, I appreciate it, man. No, in any time, any time you want to chat, I can come back and talk crap for hours. <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> want to shout out where, where people can find you again real quick? Before yeah, you can find me at russleach.com. Um, I think you said that uh, my, my YouTube channel is below. There's links in the uh, About section in my YouTube channel. Um, yeah, and, and again, just you can come find me on, um, on Facebook. You can email me, uh, russ at createuk.net. That's K R E the number eight UK.net. That was my original persona on the internet some time ago, createuk.net. Um, and that all, uh, comic book black belt, uh, com, I think they, they all siphon into the russleach.com, uh, website. And like I say, I'm, I'm over at Facebook, MeWe, Gab, Minds, uh, and Twitter. So check me out. Come see me. I'm always up for a conversation about comics. Awesome, man. It's been great, man. Thank you for coming on. No, thank you. It was a re really, really good uh, conversation, and it was great to speak to you. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll be doing some more. Awesome. Thanks, man. See you soon. You have a g Enjoy the rest of your weekend. You too, man. Bye-bye. All right, bye. All right, so I, I'm going to keep it going just for a couple minutes here. I did want to get back to the chat real quick, but that was really fun chatting with uh, Russ. It's the first time I've been able to chat with him live, so um, that was really cool. Mario, I see you in there. Thanks for uh, popping in and stuff. And uh, I guess you said uh, Marvel and DC are doing the same thing over and over again, and if they do the same something else, then crap comes out. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally... <laughs> Totally agree. I think the best things to read from Marvel and DC are the stuff that's kind of in the past. <laughs> um, let's see. Veet, what's going on? Veet Artwork, how you doing, man? Um, well, ripoffs is a thing that happened since the beginning of comics, and it will happen forever. Yeah, that's true. Um, <laughs> they're not infringement after all. They're just inspired by. I know, right? I mean... When it comes down to it, and yeah, you're saying image comics, like, yeah, I mean, look at Youngblood and tell me there's not, you know, repeats of all kinds of Marvel DC characters in, in that book, you know? So, yeah, absolutely. Um, so there, there's always different takes, and, and I guess however little or mu much you kind of cloak it, you know, the, the inspiration is there. Um so, you know, it, it, as artists, I think we uh, kind of have a responsibility to try and just make sure we're so extra creative, you know, and, and try not to uh, let those inspirations come to a point where it's almost like we're copying, you know. Um, so, yeah. Uh, looks like Mario left. Um, thanks for hanging out for a little bit. Um, and yeah, that is going to be just about it for, um, for the thing. Uh, but if, again, you can find me at, um, donkeyjawprojects.com. And, uh, remember if you sign up for the email list now, there's free comics. It opens up the, uh, secret treasury of, uh, Donkey Jaw Projects comics. Um, and you can actually read Lone Wolf, uh, the first five pages of my story, you can read there for free now. Uh, so go ahead over to donkeyjawprojects.com, or actually there's a link in the description that'll bring you to um, subscribe for the email list. And when you do that, you're going to get something, some cool comics so uh, for free. Um, and other than that, I hope you guys are having a great Memorial Day weekend, and um, I think that's it, guys. Um, I'll talk to you the next time I do a video. <laughs> All right. Peace out.